Hey guys. Today I wanted to talk about the 10 gallon tank, but let's just pass by these. Here's a dirty refugium, but it's doing its job. It's really growing a lot of algae. Here's the 20 gallon, mushroom dominated. Here's the 75 gallon. That's looking pretty good lately. I'm pretty happy with that. And here's the 10 gallon. So I thought the focus would be on the 10 gallon. And what I wanted to approach with you is I have not done anything to this tank except water change. And as you can see, it's got a serious bubble algae issue. I haven't done anything to prevent that. In the past, I've tried emerald crabs and they've never worked for me. So I haven't put those in. I thought maybe just through water change that over time they would eventually die off. They've peaked in their spreading probably about a month or so ago. My water parameters are fine. I'm growing this Montipora digitata, which I did not put in as a frag. It just grew up off the rock that it was on. And this Kenya tree, you know how many I have in my other tanks? That I did not place in there. That grew up from nothing. And obviously these are from this one. So I haven't added anything. I do have two clownfish in here, which most of you guys know. Those are the only inhabitants fish-wise that I have in here. And then I also have this guy over here. Now, you can't tell, but that's a tuxedo urchin underneath this grassalaria. There's some bubble algae on it, and I can't tell you, it might even be a little, that's not hair, that's a little bryopsis or chato, so it's collected that as it's gone around. Now, that's been great, and I had mentioned in one of my other videos that the tuxedo urchin won't remove large filamentaceous algae. If you notice, my rocks are rather gray. There's not a lot of coralline algae on it. There's some down here and some on the back wall, but as far as the rocks are concerned, it just moves around and consumes and strips the rock down to the core of the live rock. So it's really free of microalgae. The next thing I wanted to show you is my green star polyp. Now this has gone through a non-growing phase. It's actually retracted and I attribute that to the fact that I tried to remove it from the top here. I tried to remove it from the top and the back here and ever since I did that I scraped some of it off. It's never come back fully and that was over a month ago now. It's growing in, but not like it used to be. I also have a peppermint shrimp in here underneath that rock. You're not gonna see him, he'll come out when I feed. But what I did notice when I got back from my vacation, my aptasia were way smaller and reduced in number. So I think the peppermint shrimp was hungry because it wasn't being fed for those eight days I was gone and he came out and started to eat the aptasia. So that's something to note. If they're full and eating meaty foods that you feed, chances are they're not gonna be hungry enough to eat the aptasia. I have a little hair algae here just grew in, but that's because I'm limited with hermit crabs. I'm down to maybe one or two hermits that I can see. So I need to replenish my hermit crabs here. I believe I have a sufficient amount of snails, the astrias, I have three or four, but I probably could use another because I know my glass gets coated with algae quite quickly. My lighting, for those of you who are interested, that's the AI Soul. I keep everything at 60% and the blues, the two blues on this are, I believe, 35 or 45 in that range. I don't have a high blue on this. But 60 across the board will work too, and it ramps up at 8 a.m. and goes off at about 8.30 at night. You know, ramps down from about 6 p.m. In the overflow box, I've just stuffed a sponge down in here to collect the large detritus that travels over. I have a small, cheap pump in here. I don't know whether it's a JB something from Amazon. I have the 
Auto Aqua there, Smart ATO, and uh, I have the cheap Heiger Mini. I think it's a 50 watt mini heater back there. That one's been okay. They're not accurate in terms of temperature. You have to measure it first to check to see exactly where it's gonna be based on the thermostat that it has uh, with it. So those of you who've been following me for a long time, I made the canopy here. And what's happened is over time, salt creep has formed on the ends. So what I did, and it's because I fill my water line up way high, I like to have that nice and high. So when I cut my overflow box, I didn't cut it down too far. So my water is up right near the top. This is foam. So the salt creep doesn't do anything to this. But over here it does. What I did here is I put two pieces of acrylic plastic here on the corners, silicone those in so the salt creep would not come up any more out on the edges. I should have probably put it all the way across, but honestly, I only had four pieces this size. So I put three, one, two, and one on the other corner. So now when I put my canopy on there, the salt can maybe right in here it could, but I noticed the biggest problem was in these corners. It would really be bad here uh, in the corners. So that's why I put those in there. So that's a quick update on the 10, guys. I wish I had more coralline on my rocks, but it's not gonna happen while I have that urchin in there. He just keeps scraping it off. So if you have any questions about the 10 gallon, feel free to leave a comment or a question and I'll try to answer it. 